The world is becoming more and more violent, and the idiots in charge are making it worse. What the world needs is an international advisory committee who truly understands global politics, namely us. Time has come for us to start using our acting talents in a different way. As actors, it is our responsibility to read the newspapers and then say what we read on television like it's our own opinion. Matt Damon. Now, now, I know everyone's living that uh, self-imposed quarantine life, whether they like it or not. But that's not really an excuse to act like an absolute crazy person. Now, of course, it is an excuse for Hollywood elite and Marvel directors and apparently Marvel authors and writers to uh, not only lash out at uh, the president on Twitter, but then lash out at customers, calling them all sorts of names. It's so bizarre to me. Maybe you all can inform me in the comment section down below exactly what do people think they're going to accomplish by replying to, for example, the president's tweets. You're in, you're in Hollywood, you're a movie maker. You're working on Doctor Strange, the next one of the next big Marvel movies. And instead of like actually working or scripting, and by the way, make no mistake about it, this dude could work from home. This dude could work from wherever. He could be looking over stuff. I'm sure, absolutely sure, that there's stuff to do. Um, if you're a comic book writer, okay, maybe they're not printing comic books right now, but nothing's stopping you from writing them. Nothing's stopping you from, I don't know, creating an Indiegogo and, I don't know, self-funding your own new comic book, a, a new IP even. There's all sorts of things you can do. These people are not the ones that are really that strongly affected by everything going on. But... Far be it for me to tell a Hollywood celebrity or someone who thinks they're a Hollywood celebrity that their opinion doesn't matter to us plebs. I mean, this has been an absolute gold rush of idiocy. I, I don't know any other way to describe this. I mean, it, it, it's, it's hilarious to me. Um, so we have this article, two different articles. Uh, one... Uh, coming from Bounding Into Comics. Dr. Strange director Scott Derrickson calls President Trump a mm, deletioner. I'll say that word, the M word. Um, idiot. Idiot. I, I don't understand. Like, forget it. I'm not paying to see your movie now. I'm not. This is how you spend your free time being a moron. I mean, look, you're 100% entitled to your opinion. There are things that the president does that I don't like too, but I don't screech at him on Twitter about it. That's about as futile as running your head into a brick wall. But you don't do it for that, do you? You do it for clout. You do it so your other buddies with blue check marks can see that you did it. So that you can be like, yeah, I totally roasted Trump. Farewell forever. To the same time next week. Dr. Strange director Scott Derrickson called President Trump a deletioner. Derrickson's description of the president came in response to a recent tweet from the president that reads, quote, we cannot let the cure be worse than the problem itself. At the end of this 15 day period, we will make a decision as to which way we want to go. Absolutely nothing wrong with that statement. It's, it's, how do you say, it's a tough pill to swallow for some people. It's in a time in which, like, as of today, you're seeing this on, on Friday. But Thursday, the United States became the number one. We're number one. We're number one. We're number one in confirmed cases. Again, this is all feeding into the the hype machine, the fear hype machine. Um, these aren't necessarily new cases. These are diagnosed. These are people that have had it for weeks, for all we know. Again, not to minimize it but to take a little bit of the edge off. Uh, and the fact of the matter is, you can't let the cure be worse than the problem. That's just a, that's just a fact. Any whoozle. Derrickson then used a video of Lord of the Rings Gollum to call the president a terrible thing. Uh, again, you can not like the president. That's entirely your right. Oopsie doopsie poopsie. Did you delete it? 
Uh-oh, Pascadios. I guess it wasn't a good look for you, was it? Aww. Oh no. Derrickson would continue to rail against the president over the next few days. On March 24th, he wrote, Sacrificing money to save lives is the cost of everything going on right now. He added, Sacrificing lives to save money is the cost of an evil criminal enterprise. And the corporations sit there in their, in their corporation buildings and, and, and see that they're, they're all corporation-y and they make money. Hmm? Hey, don't worry about it, Scott. They set aside $25 million for a museum. So aren't you happy about that? $300 million for refugees. This is a great, I mean, forget all the American people who can't pay the rent next month. You should be touting this. This is supposed to be, they put 25 million into uh, their own fund to pay the House of Representatives, gives themselves a raise. These are good things. You like big government. Why are you mad? Later that day, Derrickson doubled down writing, well, that's one way for this idiot to kill off his own base. So are you, what? You're, are you wishing deletion upon all of us? I, I, I don't, I don't understand. Is, is that what, is that what you want? Uh, it's very bizarre to me. Oopsie doopsie poopsie. You deleted it again. Well, did you believe it or not? I think you meant it. Derrickson would also describe Trump as evil and crazy. Fine. That's fine. Okay. On the 25th, Derrickson would continue to rail, accusing him of committing mass deletion. He wrote... Because of you, Donald Trump, the United States will have the highest death toll in the world. I, yeah, that's right. He didn't see the future. I'm sorry. His fault. You know, people didn't practice social distancing even though they knew they should have. Oh, Trump. He then added, let's see how popular remain after you deranged mass deletioner. Hmm, let's see if that's still up. Oopsie doopsie poopsie. Scott Derrickson, are you on a mass delete spree? It sounds like somebody at Marvel might have told you this isn't good for business. How do you feel? Again, a lot of Trump voters pay to see Marvel movies. And you know what a lot of people are doing right now? They're sitting at home. They're smashing the like button on this video. They're leaving a comment. They're looking at your Twitter comments and they're going to say, is this somebody that I want to give my hard earned money to, especially after Hollywood begged Washington for a bailout and got denied. Is this somebody that I want to give my even tighter budgeted money to now over the next three months when, uh, you know, everybody's income is down for the most part, except for a really lucky, you know, half a percent of people out there that know how to profit off this stuff while the rest of us just figure out how to, <laughs> you know, how to deal with it. Derrickson would also state the reason was due to creative differences. Oh, Derrickson recently dropped out of directing Dr. Strange sequel, Dr. Strange in the multiverse of madness with initial reports indicating the reason was creative differences. Derrickson would also say that the reason was due to creative differences. However, he also indicated he would still be attached to the film as an executive producer. However, rumors from the operative known as the Chan indicated Derrickson was canned because he quote, refused to meet deadlines and was constantly coming up with excuses. The same rumor also detailed that he quote, frequently blamed Disney, even though they were very accommodating to him. That's odd. Blaming somebody else for your own problems. This is probably something new to him. This is probably the first time he's ever done it. The rumors also indicated there were creative differences between Derrickson wanting to use Nightmare as the main villain, whereas Kevin Feige wanted to use Scarlet Witch to be the primary antagonist. Derrickson will be hosting a watch party with comicbook.com on March 26th at 8 p.m. The idea is to watch Doctor Strange in your home and discuss the film with him on Twitter. I can't wait. It would sure be a shame if a bunch of people filled his Twitter with uh, mega memes. But that's neither here nor there. I mean, the, the idea that these Marvel writers are so up their own rears. How about this one? Marvel writer Gary Duggan tells comic fans to eat a bag of D's. 
Marvel comic writer Jerry Duggan recently took to Twitter to tell comic fan to eat a bag of pre aft D's. Duggan, who is currently penning Marauders Cable Savage Avengers, decided to respond to a comic book fan who posted a GIF reaction in response to a recent Newsarama article about the upcoming X-Men event, X-Men Swords, which is stupid. Imagine the X-Men. Now imagine them if they used swords. Peak creativity. In response to the article, Twitter user Pixelart95 posted a rather common GIF of Stanley from The Office doing an eye roll. Duggan, who was tagged in the original post by Newsarama, would respond by saying, Nate, wishing you success in your continuing journey outside of comics. Smug much? Just get that, just fart right in that glass and... <sighs> the delicious smell of my own farts. Another would respond to Duggan by saying, no wonder this industry is tumbling. So professional. He responds, you ding-dongs, you don't get to show up on my mention and keep your civilian status. You can say whatever the heck you want anywhere. You can, you want, except in the mentions of someone else. One fan called him an a-hole, to which he responded, eat a bag of pre-FDs, but nice grammar. Duggan later doubled down on his assertion that people will not be treated civilly if they show up in his mentions. Going on to say, good lord, man, I'm talking about D's that show up in my mentions. Want to be that guy? Go ahead. Meantime, the adults have larger, more pressing concerns. Who would want to give anybody this self-important any money? Period. He would also write, Always enjoy when these poop birds show up in my mentions, then boo-hoo when they lose their civilian status. Yeah, so stunning and brave, Duggan. Jerry Duggan appears to not understand how Twitter works. He's getting upset that people responded to a Newsarama article that tagged him. If he didn't want to be tagged in the post, there's an option to remove the tag. However, he's either ignorant of this option or willfully chose not to do it in order to insult a comic book fan and artist. A fan and artist who simply expressed their opinion via a gif that they were not enthused about an upcoming X-Men event book. This is a perfect example of modern Marvel, modern Marvel comics, modern Marvel movies. Let it all burn. I don't plan on seeing Doctor Strange in the theater anymore. Obviously, I wasn't interested in any book written by Jerry Duggan anyway, but you know, I'm sure he'll sell 4,000 copies worldwide and he'll be real happy about it. And uh, great, congratulations to him. His industry's on life support, but he's wasting time arguing with fans on Twitter. Good use of your time, bud.